She-Hulk Attorney at Law just wrapped up on Disney Plus, and I'm one of the eight people that actually watched all the episodes. Here are my thoughts. Tatiana Maslany plays Jennifer Walters, the cousin of Bruce Banner. She's an attorney, she struggles with her profession, her relationships, and oh yeah, the fact that she's been infused with some of the Incredible Hulk's blood slash DNA, and is now a raging she-beast herself. Except for not really, she's able to actually get a hold of things very early on and actually looks like a smoke show when she's in She-Hulk form. It's a Tony Stark contrast to her cousin who spent many years trying to get a hold on this creature living within him. He went to very dark places. No, for her in that department, things go very well. And in fact, she embraces the character as the season progresses. I don't really mind any of that outside of the fact that how she became She-Hulk was very silly and stupid, but the entire show is very silly and stupid. So what struggles does a mega hot mean green machine have to overcome? Online trolls and bullying. Men in the real world not finding Jennifer Walters appealing. They want to clap that She-Hulk ass. I honestly can't blame them. She knows how to work it. She knows how to twerk it, and baby she worth it. So you may not have watched this and you thought, Adam, what's this all about? Why should I invest my time into another MCU property that looks like it's just a colorful hot mess? Well, you, you probably shouldn't. I watched it during breakfast by myself. My 10 year old son, my 13 year old daughter had no interest, my wife, I mean, she doesn't wanna doesn't give a shit about She-Hulk. In fact, I'm gonna say something kind of controversial here based on the conversations I've had with multiple different women of different walks of lives. I don't really think a lot of ladies give a shit about superhero women. At least, not the ones Marvel's presenting. Truth be told, I didn't give a crap about many of the Marvel superheroes that were being touted out early on. Iron Man? No interest. Captain America? Lame? Thor? More like Snore. But damn it if I didn't get invested early on. Thanks to some great writing and fantastic performances, She-Hulk has one of those, and that's Tatiana. She's a treasure, she's a treat. She's great as the character. It's just the writing on this show is so bewildering. It's like eighth grade level stuff, but the target audience is all over the place, and it speaks to mainly the guys that it hates. To the vast majority of people on the planet, and even those that love Marvel stuff, they don't know the inner workings of the machine, what studio owns what property, why Sony gets paid for Spider-Man, or why the X-Men are important to Disney now because they acquired Fox a few years back. Like, that that's all noise, that's all background nonsense. So when you have a show like She-Hulk come along that's pro-women, it's got strong female leads everywhere, and most of the guys are dumbasses, like, okay, fine, but do something with that. Don't just go after the edgelords online that make video after video bashing Disney because now you're giving them the exact fuel they want to make 500 more videos. You might not know what I'm talking about, and that's great for you. That's, that's probably healthy for you. That doesn't mean they don't have a point once in a while because they do, but they're capitalizing on it, let's be honest. They're, they're going all in on the hate, and it's really unwarranted. She-Hulk is just, it's fast food. Not very good fast food. It'll fill you up, it'll get the job done. You can watch it like a zombie for 22 minutes or whatever it is. It's not very long. Stuff happens, there's no consequences. You feel zero emotion. It looks okay. There's some budget put in. Sometimes She-Hulk looks solid, depending on the lighting and the scenario. Sometimes she looks like absolute shit. But if you're watching this show by episode three or four and you're still getting triggered by what it's doing, or you don't like the treatment of a character like Daredevil, like, that's on you. The show clearly doesn't take anything seriously. The writing is about as half-assed as it could possibly be. And it constantly points that out in the most obnoxious way possible. It's one thing to have fun at your own expense. I do it all the time. It's another to like blatantly look at the camera and say, wait, this isn't how shows are supposed to be structured. Are we just gonna do this anyways? Like, that's, not, that's not anything. That's just lazy. Now a big part of me looks at this show and thinks, who, who cares at all? Deadpool makes fun of characters. They have people on that movie that are normally very serious and they kind of play them as a joke. That's fine, it's self-contained. Other more serious stuff happen outside of it. But here, She-Hulk's actually progressing storylines. And that's where things can be a problem. Characters are introduced for the first time or their plot points go further on that'll probably be addressed in another movie that hopefully will be more serious. 
and you have to think like this is where it came from this is what happened with the mandalorian and the book of boba fett book of boba fett was trash but you actually had to watch a couple episodes to see what was going on with the mandalorian and it's not like the mandalorian just showed up and was like hello sir let me help you fight some bad guys no they were full Mando episodes that actually took his story into a different area. It completed arcs. That's a problem. Now, people that are legitimately upset about this show and think it's the worst thing ever, you clearly have very high standards because I've seen some terrible shows over my time. But as it stands, it's not very good on its own. It's just there. That's the best I can say about She-Hulk. It just exists and perhaps people have bigger issues with it because it's part of the overall Marvel Cinematic Universe and they expect higher standards from that. Well, that, that should have gone out the window quite a while back with some of these movies and other shows we've gotten. In fact, I at least could finish She-Hulk, whereas Moon Knight lost me by like the fourth episode. Uh, Hawkeye, I was barely able to finish because it got so stupid. And a couple others, like Miss Marvel, yeah, that, I was out on that on episode three too. They're just not good. They're boring, they're, they're uninteresting, they're padded out. So in that sense, at least She-Hulk goes quick and says nothing at the same time. I am gonna go into spoilers for a little bit, so if you haven't seen the show and you haven't seen the finale especially, maybe walk away. If we take this season as a whole, we had a wedding episode, we had a retreat episode, we have these episodes that don't really have arcs in them. With a typical foundation, you have a struggle be introduced. You have the middle of the episode where they try to overcome, solve a situation, figure something out. And then by the end, it wraps up nicely. You might learn a lesson. And if it's more of a serialized show, you lead in to a tease to the next one, a to be continued or a, whoa, there's another threat out there. She-Hulk bucks the trend and they congratulate themselves on that in the finale, episode nine, where almost the entirety of the episode is her pointing out how this show's unconventional, how they do things a little differently here, and maybe that's not a good thing. Unconventionality, sure, I don't know if that's a word. Unconventionality, sure, fine. Try it out, see how it sticks. But there's a reason why there's a formula. There's a reason why film schools exist and why you can learn how to write a script. But with She-Hulk, specifically the ending, I feel like the writers skipped those courses. Just said, screw it, we're doing whatever we want. In the grand finale, all the characters come to a head when She-Hulk has to confront the guy behind the mask, who's basically one of those YouTube channels that makes fun of strong female lead type characters and how they're lazily written and usually hijack a male character persona and they're better and stronger and smarter and blah, 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 blah. It's tired, it's boring, whatever. All around, the criticism's tired and boring and the fact that Disney keeps doing this is also tired and boring, so we all lose. As the Hulk would say, I see this as an absolute loss. Anyway, she shows up to this edgelord event, Tatiana drops down, the main dude injects himself with serum, turning himself into a giant Hulk who can control everything very easily again. I don't know why Bruce Banner had such a hard time with it. Everyone else is handling themselves very well when turning into the Hulk. Next thing you know, Abomination jumps into the mix. Bruce Banner drops down from space and it's gonna be this big epic fighting climax, except for it's not because this is when the writers get really clever. And this is when She-Hulk addresses everyone saying, whoa, 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 this is hacky writing. We're not doing your traditional standard ending where there's a big battle and then there's some lessons learned. No, I'm gonna break the fourth wall. I'm gonna rip through the actual Disney Plus app and jump into another one. And we're gonna go track down Kevin. She doesn't say his last name, uh, presumably because the writers don't know how to pronounce it just like everyone else. She goes to Marvel Studios, walks around the place, fights some security guards in an incredibly lame action sequence with the song Big Energy by Lato playing in the background. The song comes out of nowhere, ends right away. Just the choices they make on this show are so bewildering. Good song though, it's a, it's a jam for sure. Anyway, she goes to see Kevin finally, which is an acronym for something or another. I don't know, it's a robot. And they make a deal about the finale. He changes things. Mary Poppins style. And the next thing you know, she's eating outside with the family and friends like it's the ending of a Fast and the Furious film. Even Matt Murdock's there again. Some people were upset that Matt Murdock was a little funnier in this. He was telling some jokes. He looked a little bit more cartoonish with his yellow and red ensemble. 
again. Okay, like who cares? This show is so dumb and pointless. Matt Murdock being there at all is a treasure. I'm glad we got the actor back. I was a little bummed out that they didn't even put in the effort to make her talking to the camera to her breaking fourth wall as something going on with her mentally. I thought at first this was like a side effect of becoming She-Hulk since Bruce Banner had the different characters that he was fighting with that maybe that was something in her head and she wasn't actually talking to us, the audience. But I guess she just was. Because it doesn't explain how she's able to go through the Disney app and do stuff and go into a different dimension, unless that too was in her head, because that's some Matrix level shit right there that she's got to work through. I don't think, I don't give the writers that much credit though. Anyway, let me know your thoughts on She-Hulk. Not the worst thing ever, just not anything ever. Just really, it's, it's fast food, like I said. You, you eat it, you consume it, you move on to the next Disney meal that'll probably be just as mediocre. Hopefully though, hopefully we get something more out of this. Again, I like the actress. I don't even mind She-Hulk, she's cool, she's fun. She gets it. It's just what she's in is, is, is pretty lame, pretty mediocre, and I think we all expect a little bit more for the MCU. Like the video if you had a good time. Make a comment if you want to leave a comment. That'd be great. I'd like to hear from you. Hulk smash the living hell out of that subscribe button, and hopefully I'll see you next time. Oh my gosh, you're still here. Thanks for sticking around. Since you did, maybe I should inform you that I'm on Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. If you become a Patreon at even the $1 level, you get access to 300 plus exclusive videos just for signing up at a dollar a month and showing some support to my channel, which is a one-man operation here. There's also a join button. You can join on YouTube. It kind of works the same way. I'm on TikTok. I'm on Twitch at Adam Does Movies. And I have a merch store where you can buy a beautiful shirt like this. These are just some of the ways you can support the channel, and I would appreciate it. Thanks.